Lovers of Jesus Ministries International. The message you are about to hear is from the Lord's anointed Dr. Edward Irobi, the man with the mandate to proclaim the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and to raise an army for the Lord in this end time. Good evening, my brothers and sisters. You are welcome from all the places you have logged in, whether in the U.S. or outside the United States. Today, I have something to tell you. Remember, we are starting a new series and... Uh, Let's just call it a sub-series of what we have been talking about since the month of uh, um, since the month of September, consecration of the spirit. So we are going a little bit further. We are going to talk about that topic after our prayer. Shall we pray? Our Father who art in heaven, we hallow your holy name. Thy kingdom come. That will be done in our spirit, souls, and bodies as it is in heaven. Heavenly Father, we pray that you open our eyes to behold wondrous things out of your law. As we study our law, oh God, the entrance of your world giveth light. Let the light that accompanies your world shine in our hearts. Let darkness flee. Let all glory, all honor be ascribed unto you. Immortality that dwells in unapproachable light, our Savior. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Beloved, this evening, once again, you are welcome. We are going a little further. You know, for some weeks, since the month of September, we started the series on consecration of the Spirit. So, today, I don't want to take so much time, but we are still going to scratch a little bit because everything is based on consecration of the Spirit. Remember, after the first introductory uh, um, teaching during the first week of the month of September, we started, you know, picking on different characteristics of human spirit. And we finished those ones. So, today, as we have our timetable, 
we are going to start with consecration of the Spirit, paying attention to the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Paying attention to the fruit of the Holy Spirit. So, we have these nine fruits of the Holy Spirit. I am going to, I'm going to start off a, in an introductory manner, not assuming anything in case if anybody will say, oh, I am not aware of the definition of one of the acronyms or the other that we have been, you know, using since uh, we started the message on consecration of the spirit. Because somebody may say, what does consecration of the spirit, what, what does it stand for? Or what is the definition of the spirit of a man? So I think that the best thing would be just to give you a little information about the definition of the spirit of a man and then we delve into the consecration of the spirit by paying attention to the fruit of the spirit that's love right so that will save us a lot of time so let us go very fast so when we talk about consecration of the spirit you know, we highlighted something about the spirit of a man. That the word of the Lord in the book of Proverbs chapter 20 verse 27 has it in this way. That the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. That's what we have been establishing. That the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. That searches all the inward parts of the belly. And we establish the fact that the Spirit of the Lord uses His light of, you know, His light that illuminates, you know, the heart of a man. And when the heart of a man, the Spirit of a man is illuminated by the power of the Holy Spirit, now revelation comes. Now, better understanding concerning the deep things of God will come. Now, the person can be quickened by the power of the Holy Spirit. We talked about that. And last week, remember, the Lord blessed us with another subtopic about who roots your spirit. So, now, and we know that immediately we have given our life to Christ. The Lord Jesus is the ruler of our spirit. He is the ruler of our souls. He is the owner of our bodies because he is Lord of Lords, our Lord. Right. So now we have known all those fundamentals that the Spirit of God wants to continue to shine his light in our spirit so that when our spirits get connected with the Holy Spirit, now we will exhibit we will demonstrate the life God wants us to, to show forth on the surface of the earth. Beloved, now, as we are about discussing consecration of the Spirit, focusing on the fruit of the Spirit, I want to give us a very good introduction, what I call introduction to fruit bearing. These things are things that we have known for a while as children of God. But I want you to see it from the perspective the Lord is going to use it to bless our hearts today. A little introduction concerning fruit bearing. The fundamental thing is that now you are born again. Now you are born of the spirit of God. Your spirit man is renewed old things passed away propensity of sin gone now you are on your way to the kingdom of heaven walking on the narrow path beautiful right now let's go so the lord wants to tell us something as after we have given our life to christ after accepting the lord jesus that he expects us to bear fruit so you are going to see how we are going to link it 
with the different aspects of the fruit, one fruit of that spirit. Because God wants us to live the type of life that will show for that our lives are consecrated unto him. And that's why he's taking us deeper right now. So when you talk about fruit bearing as a Christian, what comes into your mind? There are some things we want to highlight. First of all, our heavenly father, point number one, our heavenly father delights in our bearing fruit. He wants us to bear fruit. If we check the word of the Lord in the book of John chapter 15 verse 8, it says, Hearing, hearing is, hearing is my father glorified. The Lord Jesus was talking to his disciples that ye bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. I, I want you to keep it there. You, you know, some people think that after being born again, after giving their lives to Christ, that's where salvation ends. That's where our walk with God ends. Because I have said, Jesus, come into my life. I am a sinner. I repent of my sins. I want to go to heaven. I don't want to go to hell. Some people just relax. No, 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 no. The Lord Jesus is saying, now, when you start bearing fruit, you are going to show for that you are his disciple. A disciple, a learner, someone who is a learner in the classroom of the Lord Jesus Christ. Someone who is a child of God who says, all things are now passed away. Behold, all things have become new. The Lord delights in your fruit bearing. The Lord delights in my fruit bearing. He does not want us to be just unproductive. And you see how we are going to link all these things, how we are going to connect them, you know, to the fruit of the Spirit. Number one, our Father who art in heaven, He delights in our bearing fruit. Number two, we are encouraged by the Lord to bear fruit unto God. Let's check the word of the Lord in the book of Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7 verses 4 to 6. Therefore, my brethren, you also have become dead to the law through the body of Christ, that you may be married to another, to him who was raised from the dead that we should bear fruit to God. Now we have a new relationship with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. And God expects us to do what? Bear fruit unto him. Let's check out the type of fruit Brother Paul was talking here. For when we were in the flesh, the sinful passions which were aroused by the law we are at work in our members to bear fruit to death. You see why this introductory aspect of this lesson is very important. So we have to give this foremost information concerning fruit bearing. Before our lives, before the type of fruit we, we are bearing was unto death. Verse number six, but now we have been delivered from the law, having died to what we were held by, so that we should serve the newness of the spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. That's what the spirit of the Lord wants us to appreciate today. That fruit bearing is only going to be actualized by the help of the Holy Spirit because of the newness of the Spirit, because the Spirit of God has started a new work in our lives. Very, very important. If you remember the encounter John the Baptist had with the Jews, John the Baptist, when he was baptizing in Jordan, he had an encounter with the Jews in the book of John, in the book of Matthew chapter 3. 
verses 7 to 10, it says, But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, Brood of vipers. Let's see what he said. Brood of vipers, who want you to flee from the rocks to come? Therefore, bear fruit, worthy of repentance. Let's stop there for a, uh, for a moment. You see, the, these people, the Jews, they say that they have known the Lord. But John the Baptist said, hey, if you have known the Lord, let there be fruit unto righteousness. Fruit that the Spirit of God will help you to show forth. So that's where we are heading to. The Lord is saying, hey, in this life of consecration, I want to work out something in you by the power of my spirit so that you show forth all this fruit through the enablement that is from the Lord. Verse number five. For when we, okay, that's um, John the Baptist. Uh, let me see. From verse um, number nine, John chapter three, verse number nine. And do not think to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. Because they were thinking because they were children of Abraham, the kingdom of heaven is open for them. You know, for I said to you that God is able to raise up children to Abraham from these stones. And even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Beloved, you are going to see subsequently the message from the Lord Jesus that we are part of this tree. The Lord Jesus is the vine. And we are part of the vine, the branches. And our heavenly father is the husband man. The one that prunes the branches. The one that makes the branches to be in a good form to bear much fruit. Now, John the Baptist speaking by the enablement of the Holy Spirit says, hey, the axe is on the tree. Any tree that does not bear good fruit will be hewn down. Any branch, any part of this vine that does not glorify the Lord through fruit bearing will be taken away. I, I, I just want to keep you thinking. Uh, do you know why some people, you know, they die young? Do you know why some believers, within a short time, some people say, oh, come, why is it that that pastor just died like that? Why is it that that brother just died like that? Sometimes, I want you to mark my word very well. And after you go and pray and consult the Lord, sometimes the Lord will take away, according to the word of the Lord, People that are not bearing fruit. I want you to listen to the word of the Lord. After you have to go like the Berean church to see whether these things are so. When you are not bearing fruit, there is every tendency that you will be hewn down. The Lord will push you aside. I don't know what God has been speaking to you about tomorrow. I don't know the ministry God has given to you. Hear ye the word of the Lord, my people. All of you that are hearing this, God has his hand upon all of you. I don't know what God has been speaking to you, but talk sakes the word of the Lord. Any tree, any part of the tree that does not bear fruit will be cut off. We are in a critical time in our generation. The master is coming. This is not the time to play church. This is not the time to play games. This is the time to be where God has planted you, to bear fruit unto righteousness, to bear fruit by the enablement of the Holy Spirit. And that's why the Lord is blowing this trumpet, even as John the Baptist told the Jews. Nobody wants to be thrown into fire. Nobody wants to be condemned on the day of judgment. Point number three. The Lord Jesus is still seeking fruit from us. We are talking about building this foundation of fruit bearing. The Lord Jesus is still seeking fruit from us. Let's check the word of the Lord in the book of Luke. Luke chapter 13, 7 to 9. 
Then he said to the keeper of his vineyard, Look, for three years I have come seeking fruit. Hmm. Hey, Makori Alambe. For three years I have come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. This should not be your portion. This will not be my portion. Just imagine for three years, the Lord was looking for fruit on the fig tree. No fruit was found. Will God say this thing about you? I have given you my Holy Spirit. I have blessed you with salvation. I have been answering your prayers. I want you to be productive. What do you want the Lord to do again? Be very careful. I am not a prophet of doom. I have to give you the whole counsel of God. You cannot be covering yourself with blanket every time and you'll be chewing uh, uh, popcorn and be drinking soda and you begin to say, oh, another brother will do it. That brother will go on evangelism. That sister will, will, will do that thing God wants us to do in the church. What of you? Make sure you bear fruit or else there are consequences for not bearing fruit. Let's check the word of the Lord. Cut it down. You see? You see the consequence? It will be cut down. Why does it use up the ground? Uh-huh. Some of them come to the church. They will be warming the pews. They are not productive in the house of the Lord. The Lord is saying, hear ye the word of the Lord. Why does it use up the ground? But he answered and said to him, Sir, let it alone this year also until I dig around it and fertilize it. And if it bears fruit, well, but if not, after that you can cut it down. Brethren, the Lord is giving us little time. And I want to speak to you some things you begin to, ex uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know, see in the end of time. I, I was on my knees this week, and uh, no, past, uh, past week, and the Lord started speaking to me. I said, Edward, whatever you are talking to my people, let them know that I am coming soon, very, very soon, sooner than even anticipated. So this is the message the Lord is giving to everybody. So if we are not bearing fruit, the Lord does not have that time. We don't have time to be pampered, just like newborn babes every time, feeding them with milk. Now the Lord is saying, there is urgency in the spirit for the church to be awake unto righteousness and go and possess the gates of their enemies and go and do the work of the master before the trumpet. That's the message. So that nobody will be cut down. Nobody will be brought low because of not bearing fruit. Point number four. Fruit bearing as a mark of consecration. Gradually we are entering. Fruit bearing is a mark of consecration. Now we are saying we are consecrated unto the Lord. We are separated. The life we live right now is by faith of the Son of God. Top says the word of the Lord in the book of Romans chapter 6 verse 13. Neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Now showing that we are now consecrated. Our life should continue to be on that holy path that shows that we are now living for the Lord. Because fruit bearing is a mark that we have been separated unto the Lord. We are walking in obedience. The life I live is by faith of the Son of God. And each new day we trust the Holy Spirit to help us. We say, dear Spirit of the Lord, it's not by might nor by power, but by your enablement. And we see the Lord helping us. Point number five. Fruit bearing as a way to accumulate treasure in heaven. Beloved, when you bear fruit and your fruit remains, you know, the Lord will bless you. Let's check the word of the Lord. The book of Matthew chapter 6. Verse 19 to 20 to 21. Matthew chapter 6, 
19 to 21. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Beloved, where is your treasure? Where is your treasure? I, I was listening to a testimony of, of, of one brother from Deeper Life Ministry in Lagos, Nigeria. You understand? So the, the, this brother was testifying when the Lord Jesus took him to heaven and the Lord showed him his mansion. He couldn't believe it. And he saw how the angels were building his mansion very, very fast, carrying gold materials, you know, decorating the, the building. And he asked the Lord, Lord, why are the angels so fast like this? How are they building this mansion you say that is mine in this manner? And the Lord answered the brother and said, because the message I gave to you that you are preaching, the message is bearing fruit. Uh -huh. Now, because it's bearing fruit, treasures are kept for you in the kingdom of heaven. But just imagine some of us, the Lord has been giving messages. We, will, we, we, we have found ourselves hoarding all these messages. It's only for me. You don't want to share it with some other person. When you don't share the word of God, when you don't bear that fruit that God expects from you as a child of God, then you don't have any treasure for you. Your treasure will not be there. So when you obey the Lord, you are laying up treasure where no thieves will break through, where no rust. We are no moth. Nothing will destroy. Now, a question comes. What fruit do you bear as a believer? You see, that's point number six. We are going very fast. What fruit do you bear as a believer? Let's check the word of the Lord in the book of Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7 verses 4 to 6. Therefore, my brethren, you also have become dead to the law through the body of Christ, that you may be married to another. We read this before. I want to read it again to make a point. To him who was raised from the dead, that we should bear fruit to God. So uh, as new believers, the fruit we have to bear will be fruit unto God. And now take this revelation. Because... We are talking about consecration of the spirit because our spirits have been connected with the spirit of the Lord. Do you know what will happen? The spirit of the Lord will now shine his light. He will now bring his uh, 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 illumination into our heart to make us willing to walk and to flow in bearing the fruit of the spirit. I will make an emphasis when we start to talk about individual fruit. Because the fruit of the Spirit is one. It's a singular fruit. That's why I call it ninefold fruit. I will come to that shortly. So, mm. <sighs> the book of... Um, the book of, uh, where are we right now? We have just um, pointed out Romans chapter 7, 4 to 6. All right. We are there. Ninefold fruit of the Spirit. Now we are going to scratch it. And we are going to pick only one today. Love. And after picking on love today, you can detect the sequence. Next Sunday, God willing, we're going to talk about joy. And so on and so forth. All right. So I want to make this introductory remark so that this will help us. After this, we are going to read the book of Galatians, chapter 5, 22 to 23. So you can open it so that we can be on the same page. I want you to note this thing. Some people don't know this, but some of you are aware of this. I pray that the Lord will give you clearer understanding. 
when we talk about the fruit of the Holy Spirit, the phrase fruit of the Spirit is singular, not fruits, but fruit of the Holy Spirit. You may ask, why is this singular? It is singular because it refers to a united set of attributes. Mm -hmm. A united set of attributes that come together to reflect. Mark this. They come together to reflect the character of Christ. All of them, nine of them, nine attributes, they come together as one fruit to reflect the character of Christ. The singular word fruit implies that all nine aspects of the fruit belong together and are meant to grow on the same tree. And that tree is the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Because it is written in the book of uh, uh, John chapter 15. I am the vine and my father is the husbandman and you are the branches. So very, very important. So they grow on the same tree, the Lord Jesus Christ. Using the plural word fruits would, would imply plurality and diversity as if one could choose which aspect to pick or omit. So you have no choice. All of them are one. So we are going to make sure we have all of them together. And suffice it, I want to let you know. We are all these things, you know, they grow on the same tree. I want to keep you thinking. I pray that the Lord will minister uh, something he ministered to me, to your heart. None of us, none of us, should omit any of them. All these attributes supposed to make us complete in Christ, which means that if we don't show forth all these attributes that make up one fruit, we are not going to the kingdom of heaven. I want you to hear that very, very clearly. That's why the road is becoming narrower. That's why the Bible says, let every man be careful the foundation where he is building. There is no other foundation that will be laid except that that has been laid, Christ Jesus. You cannot tell me that, oh, you can operate in uh, one, of the, uh, one, of, uh, one aspect of the fruit, but you cannot operate uh, on another aspect of the fruit. And then you make it to the kingdom of heaven. You, you, you can be temperate. You can show forth joy. You can show forth peace. But you cannot show forth love. You are going to find out whether it's possible. That's why I want you to think. You cannot keep eight of them and go to heaven. That's why we have to tremble every time before the Lord. Say, Lord, help me. Because this is the purpose of the Father, that the church, the body of Christ will be consecrated. And the consecration here involves allowing the person of the Holy Spirit uh, to walk with our spirit. Because these things are not soul related. These fruits are not body related. They are spiritual. And when our spirits are connected with the spirit of the Lord, now they will show forth. That's why we are talking about consecration of the spirit. Consecration of the spirit. Let's read the word of the Lord. Galatians chapter 5, 22 to 23. But the fruit of the spirit is love. Nine of those. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such, there is no law. That's the word of the Lord. That's where we are heading to. So, beloved, without taking much time, it's my honor, my pleasure to take us on the high road of love. We are going to ex examine love just within a short time before we pray. As I stated before, by the grace of God, next week we shall talk about joy. 
the upper week, we talk about peace and so on and so forth until we finish. And I want to let you know that the Lord has interesting thing he wants to share with us so that we'll be on the same narrow path. What is love? Just generally, when we talk about love, you know, somebody will say that love, according to Miriam Webster's dictionary, that love is unselfish, loyal, and benevolent concern for the good of another. You are not selfish. I want him to prosper. I want him to succeed. He's not my flesh brother. He's not my blood brother. He's not my blood sister. But I want him to succeed. I want him to be blessed. I will do whatever to support him in prayer. I will do whatever to bless him with material things that the Lord has given to me selfless and you are not expecting anything in return hmm. such as fatherly concern of god you know the lord has demonstrated this towards all humans and another thing is you know we have brotherly concern one for another just like i said the love that is not uh, selfish so and another way we can see this love we are talking about is adoration of god you are adoring the Lord because you love him. Lord, I adore you. Who is like unto you among the gods? There is no one like you. Because you love the Lord, you adore the Lord. That's how Miriam Webster dictionary was defining uh, love. But now, let's go on a journey. I want to highlight what I call four forms of love. One may see in the scriptures as you go through different parts of the scriptures but i will mention all of them and pick only one because of time so in the holy scriptures we can see four unique forms of love the first one is what is known as eros stoji philia and the last one agape so in this study we are going to focus on agape type of love. This is not a strange information, but I want you to walk with me and let's see whether the Lord will give you a, a tiny insight by the time we finish this, uh, this, uh, this uh, um, journey on love. Agape is the highest of the four types of love in the Bible. The term defines God's immeasurable, incomparable love for humankind. It is the divine love that comes from God. Agape love is perfect, unconditional, sacrificial, and pure. Let's wait. How do I fit in here? That's another question. Is my love for my wife pure? Hmm. Yes, she's my wife. Is my love for her perfect? Is my love for my children pure? Is my love for my children unconditional? Is my love for that brother who sings in the church sacrificial type of love? Or am I expecting something in return after helping somebody else? You know, nobody's going to judge you. We are, uh, uh, you know, discussing the word of the Lord. That's what the Lord is drawing us to today. Saying, hey, my children, your spirits can get connected to the spirit of the Lord. So that there will be a transfer of God's presence to your spirit. So that your spirit will show forth this attributes that comes from the spirit of the Lord and then we will show it forth and as we show forth this attribute the name of the Lord will be glorified and we will continuously be rapture ready remember the bottom line is behold he comes in the cloud the Lord Jesus is coming 
So what the Lord is doing, twofold information as I've been sharing, he wants us to be ready and he wants us to be instrument. He's going to pass through and help other people. So that is that about um, uh, um, definition of agape type of love. Now, God demonstrated this love. After looking at how God demonstrated this love, I want us to see what God expects from you and what God expects from me, and then we'll pray, all right? In the word of the Lord, in the book of John chapter 3, verses 16 to 18, we can see this thing clearly. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. God demonstrated the agape love, sacrificial love. On the cross, the Lord Jesus became the propitiation for our sins. The wrath of God was unleashed upon him for him to become the ransom, for him to be the person that will pay our price with his blood. That's why the Bible says that he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. What a love demonstrated. This is agape type of love. Verse number 17 and 18. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. The Lord does not condemn us, but our sinful attitudes condemn us. They are what will condemn us. The Lord is saying, I have shown you love. This is the way to demonstrate sacrificial love. This is the way I have shown that I love humanity. Now, the Lord is getting us closer. He's now telling us to go and show forth the same manner of attitude. To go and do likewise. The book of John chapter 13, verse number 34 to 35. John 13 34 to 35, I read the word of the Lord. A new commandment. Now, the, the Lord Jesus was talking to his disciples. Now, he's talking to us. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. That's that agape love he expects us to exhibit. As I have loved you, as he gave his life for us, as he died on the cross for us, as he became the propitiation for us, as he became the ransom for our rescue. Hey, Mama Corilla Romo Zengene. The Lord wants us to go and exhibit that type of love. That you also love one another. By this all will know that you are my disciples. If you love one for another. Brother, what is it that your brother has done that you cannot show love? What is it that your sister has done? Your sister has apologized. Why don't you accept the apology? Because the Bible says, if we don't forgive one another, if we don't exhibit this love, we ain't going to make it to the kingdom of heaven. The Lord will not be happy because he's telling us to go and do likewise. And remember the word the Lord has been giving to us since we started talking about consecration. From the book of 1 Peter chapter, uh, 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 chapter 2 verse 21. That the Lord has laid a step for us. He has laid example for us that we should walk in his step. The step of the master. Now he's talking about the step of love here. Let's go and see what he will tell us before we pray. The book of 1 Corinthians. I call this last part of our discussion the measurement criteria for love. What's the measurement criteria for love? How can you measure 
love that the Father expects from us as his children. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 from verse 1. This makes me to shake almost every time I go through this chapter. Am I measuring up? The love I show to my brother, does it measure here that I am living a consecrated life? The love I show to my sister, does it show that I am measuring up to this divine expectation? The way I treat my children, does it show that I am measuring up? The way I treat my wife, does it show I am measuring up? The way I treat people that are part of this ministry, does it show? The way I preach the gospel, does it show? The way I walk in other places where I walk, does it show? That's the summary of what the Spirit of God wants to communicate. My children, when your spirit is consecrated, I will bring in God's type of love. This attribute will saturate your spirit and you will walk in them and the Father will be glorified. That's the message. I read the word of the Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not love, I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy, just imagine, just see, the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. Wow. Just wait. No matter the grace God has given to you to prophesy, no matter mysteries God has revealed to you, no matter how God has blessed you with divine knowledge, without love, without agape type of love, all those things will not take you to the kingdom of heaven. You remember why I was telling you before that you can, you know, show forth the other eight attributes, the other eight attributes of the, of the fruit of the Holy Spirit, even if you show them forth without this love, nothing works. Before God, the person will be condemned. That's why the Bible says, bring forth your salvation every day with fear and trembling. We have to ask God, Lord, every day, my action towards my sister, my action towards my friend, my action towards my colleague at work, my action towards my children, towards my, my family members. Are they embedded in the love of God? Let's go on. Verse 3, that was, let me finish it and then we pray. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body and to be bound, but have not love, it profit me nothing. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Is not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails, but whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part, but when that which is prophet has come, then that which is in part will be done away. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but when, but then face to face. Now I know in part, 
But when I shall know, just as also I'm known, and now abide faith, hope, love, these three, but the greatest of this is love. That ends the word of the Lord. I, I want you to meditate and see what the Lord is speaking right now. The greatest of all this is what? Love. How am I demonstrating this love today? Even when it's so hard. Let me tell you something before we pray. Some of you may be saying, Brother Edward, you don't understand. There are some people that are very tough to love. I want you to hear. All of us, we, we are tough to be loved. Jesus, the Son of God, knew all this about humanity. I want to take you on a brief journey. Do you know how many times God was walking with the children of Israel in the wilderness? How the Lord was rebuking them for not believing in him. Still, the Lord loved them. The Lord endured. He provided water for them. He provided food for them. Even when they murmured, the Lord would have destroyed them. Moses petitioned the Lord. The Lord endured. Will you not endure for your brother? Jesus, the perfect example, was on the cross where he was buffeted, where he was insulted because of me, because of your own sins. And he endured it. Just imagine God himself. He could have called angels to fight for him. He said, no, 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 no. no. I came to the earth planet for this purpose. Brother, you are living on the earth to show forth the love of God. Don't succumb to hate. Don't succumb to doing it in the flesh or else the Lord will move out of the way. The Lord wants you to be light in the midst of darkness. Love does not fail. Love endures. Love hopes all things. And the Lord will bless you with eternal life and with your reward in the kingdom of heaven as you continue to persevere. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your people today. I have shared the word you gave to me with them. Father, I bless your daughters. I bless your sons all over the world as they take this message. Let the spirit of the Lord, hey, my God, let the spirit of the Lord bring forth life through this message that from today we'll begin to strive to walk in the love of God. From today we'll begin to say, eternal spirit of God, take my spirit and help me to bring forth these attributes of your fruit. Heavenly Father, without the Holy Ghost, we can do nothing. We receive grace from you to walk in love. Father, I pray that you be glorified even through this message today. For in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen and amen. Beloved, thank you for your time. Thank you for all the time you have used in walking with us listening to the message from the father today i pray that the lord will keep you i pray that the lord will bring you across our path again next week uh, sunday in jesus name amen and amen we believe you have been blessed by this message please join us every friday for our revival prayer meeting and on sunday for our bible study you can also follow us on facebook as lovers of jesus ministries in connection for prayers and answers please call plus one four seven zero five four zero one seven eight four you can also visit us on our website of www.lkmi.net remain blessed jesus is coming soon